Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to talk about Sensu API. So far, we have been using Sensu either through the UI or through the Sensu CTL command uh, to interact with it, to create checks, to manage checks, uh, to view events, etc. But there is one more way to deal with Sensu and that is through the Sensu API. Why would we want to use the Sensu API? Well, to automate the workflow. We can automate the entire monitoring workflows using Sensu API. For example, you can create checks for new machines programmatically. You can add or remove machines to the Sensu uh, server automatically. The possibilities are limitless. Sensu's API documentation is pretty good. You should read more about it. Uh, and in this video, we're going to have a quick introduction to the Sensu API and uh, I'm going to leave it at that. You should spend some time trying to understand different APIs and uh, what it can do for you. Let's get started. First of all, we need to authenticate to the Sensu API and that's pretty simple. We can use the our username and password to generate an access token for us. So I'm just going to do this. So uh, curl dash u then the username and then password. Uh, the Sensu API listens on port number 8080 slash auth. So it will give you an access token and this is valid only for around 15 minutes, I think. So you can use this access token to make API calls. For example, to use the events API and uh, look at all the events, we can use the same. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this access token here. And if I press enter, we got a response from Sensu. So if I pass it through the JQ command, uh, you know, we can see that we got a formatted response. So that's how easy it is to deal with the Sensu API. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple Python script that will allow us to deal with the Sensu API. So uh, I'm going to create a directory called scripts. And uh, I will create a Sensu API client py first of all i'm gonna do the uh, shebang so that uh, our system knows where to find the python executable we're gonna use python 3 so now we need to make http request right so for that we can use the requests module if you are not familiar with python i would strongly suggest you start learning python as it is extremely important for you as a devops engineer to know a programming language especially for situations like this okay so i'm gonna use the request module so we'll start with some constants. Uh, we know the username. It is admin. And uh, the password is, well, password. And our API space URL is on port number 80. The auth URL is slash auth on our API URL. So it would be base URL plus slash auth. So in this example, we are going to use the events API to list all the events in the Sensu server. So this would be our API URL slash API core version two namespaces default slash events. So this will be our URL. So now we need to make an HTTP request and uh, we need to authenticate through the HTTP basic auth. So for that, we need to use the HTTP basic auth method from the uh, request module itself. So I'm going to import that first. Okay, so I have imported the HTTP basic auth module. So we'll create the request object. First, we need to get the access token. So we're going to make a request to the auth URL. And uh, auth equal to just imported the HTTP basic auth with our username and password. So first, we need to get the access token. So we're going to take the response in JSON format and uh, we're going to take the access token. Okay, so now we have the access token. So now we can actually make the API call and uh, list all the events. Actually, first of all, let's see if the, you know, uh, if we are actually getting the access token. So let's just run this first. I'm going to make the script executable. And yes, we are getting the access token. So that means like our script is working so far. All right, so now we can actually make the events API call and list all the events. So again, request events URL, and then we need to pass the the access token as a header as we did here. So for that, let's create a dictionary first named headers name would be authorization. And the value would be bearer space and uh, the access token. So now in our request, we can pass this header as headers equals the dictionary we just created headers. So we know that the response is going to be a JSON response. 
let's go ahead and print it actually let's go ahead and delete this print for access token and let's just print the response yep so we can see the api response here and it's not very formatted so let's do something about that so if you go to the sensor documentation uh, we can see this is the response that we will get it's a list of dictionaries so if we look at the response here the key is called check and uh, we can see the name of the check here under metadata name so let's go ahead and print all the checks that we have in our system remember we are still using the events api we can use the checks api if we want to get a list of checks but uh, right now i'm just showing you an example of what all you can do with it so i'm gonna iterate over the response here and uh, i'm gonna print the name of the checks so it would be entry check metadata name and we can see all our check names that uh, we have created over the past videos right so if we go back and use census ctl event list we can see there's like a lot of fields and it is kind of noisy we don't need all the outputs so we can just use our script to output only the check name status and the output let's do that so we already got the name which is under metadata and uh, we have the output here and the status here so it should be pretty simple i will give a tab character in between and then status and uh, we need the output okay let's go ahead and run this oh okay can only concatenate string not int and i think that is because we just tried to concatenate a string with an integer so we need to convert that into a string all right so let's see okay so we have name status and the output we can format it better actually now we could have like a fixed width column so that it looks nicer than this all right so for that we can use python's formatting so what this means is this is going to print the string but with a minimum width of 20 so that's going to make our output looks a bit nicer okay yeah i forgot to remove this and uh All right. Okay. So if we do that in a terminal with a smaller font size, okay, that looks a lot nicer. If you go to the Sensu documentation for the Sensu API and look at all the available APIs, there's a ton of them available. We can do a lot of things with it, and this is just a start of what you can do with it. I would suggest you take a look at the Sensu API's documentation and. Uh, maybe play around with it and uh, create some scripts that would automate some of the stuff that we did in the past. That's pretty much it for this video. We are coming to an end with our VM monitoring using Sensu. I will make one more video to discuss about the production consideration. Like, you know, when you actually do this in production, what are the things to be aware of? But after that, we're gonna start a new series. Uh, for now, I'm thinking of starting Docker. Let me know in the comments if you have any different suggestions or anything so again thanks for watching see you in the next one